We're with the Carpet One Convention. We're in Denver. I'm with Charlie, D uh, Charlie Dilks. You are the chief product officer, if I'm not mistaken. I am. A lot, of, a lot of times I give people new categories, and I'm, I may do that. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Now, your conventions are always something. You, all, you guys do a great job. You are up at Presenter today for a good deal of the time. And um, I don't know how you guys get this whole thing together as well as you do. Well, I'm not sure how we do, too. If you would have saw this area yesterday at this time, I can't believe that they put it together like this. It's the first time I've been down here in a day. But uh, it's a lot of work. But, you know, we've been, uh, we've been doing it a long time. This is Howard's, I think, 56th convention really? um, today. This is my, I think this is my 35th. So uh, we've got a lot of long-tenured people, so they know, they know how to put these things on. You guys could market this thing uh, to uh, people. No, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, well, it's, I, don't, I don't think anyone wants to do it more often than twice a year. So, right, yeah, yeah. Um, in the, in the uh, products are your bailiwick, let me ask you about products and new here. And I guess LVT is the hot product of the hour. And uh, talk about that and your efforts with the category. Well, we, I guess a year ago, uh, let me go back even further. A year and a half ago, we introduced a program from IVC, uh, which was originally made in China, um, sourced by IVC in China, and we did that under our Invincible brand. Um, they since moved that uh, production to the plant in Belgium uh, that they built, which I know is pretty much almost sold out now, if not completely sold out. Um, so we're the only seller of that product in North America, or the only customer for IVC in North America for that uh, product. Um, then we introduced a product called, or a program called American Expressions, which is more of an entry level um, part of the category. It's a full spread. You have to glue it down at a lower price point than the uh, IVC product, which is a click um, product, a Unilin joint. Um, so the piece that was missing for us, at least from a branded perspective, or with our private label merchandising, what have you, was the Gretable piece. And we introduced that, uh, this convention under Vero Stone, and that's an exclusive CCA program um, provided by Armstrong. Talk about what, uh, what that is. First. Well, it's, uh, we have 22 SKUs. Again, uh, Armstrong designed them, um, again, exclusively for CCA. Um, we've, we're displaying them on grouted boards. We've got uh, 12 by 24s. We've got 16 by 16s. And then we have a, uh, four patterns or four uh, SKUs in a Versailles pattern, uh, which you see on the floor behind us here, which is terrific. But, I mean, you just can't tell the difference uh, of what you're standing on here, whether it's ceramic or stone. And uh, I think it's going to be a great product. Everyone's pretty excited about it. I guess given that look, it would seem like people would prefer to go against or not to go with ceramic, it would almost seem. Well, I, I, like there is a little bit of a cost difference. It, it really depends on what part of the country you're in, quite honestly, because if you're down in the southeast, insulation is pretty inexpensive down there. Um, the, the, the whole, uh, I guess, benefit of this, first of all, it's very warm. Um, it's quiet. It's quieter than ceramic. And the time out of the home in terms of insulation is much uh, less. This can be done in a day. You can glue it down. You can grout it, and you can leave. And there's not all much floor prep required um, compared to, say, a ceramic installation. Right. You know, I've been talking to a lot of retailers about LVT, and I get the idea that consumers rarely walk into the door thinking, I want LVT. It seems like they discover it when they're in the store and, I guess, uh, can see what the benefits are and, as a result, buy it. I mean, it's quite a phenomenon, especially since... The sale happens inside the store. Yeah, I agree. They may come in saying, I want something for my kitchen, and maybe they're thinking that they want vinyl, uh, or they may come in thinking they want hardwood, uh, but one of their I wants is it absolutely can't scratch or it must be easy to take care of, and the salesman uh, may introduce them to an LVT product as an alternative. So, you know, there's been some speculation what it's eating into. I mean, our numbers tell us that the LVT business is eating into the sheet vinyl business. Um, our sheet vinyl business hasn't been terrific, uh, quite honestly. Um, our LVT business is terrific. So uh, one, fortunately, isn't countering the other. As a category, we're up um, uh, significantly on the year. But, you know, we wish our, our sheet vinyl business was good as well. But, uh, How about laminate? Our laminate business is holding. Uh, Carpet One's laminate business actually is pretty good. We introduced Laminate for Life um, about a year ago, and it's a selection system that I think takes some of the confusion out of buying laminate. Uh, there's a lot of sameness. There's a lot of uh, product parity, and we put a system in that I think you know makes it easy to upgrade. And so Carpet One's doing actually pretty good with laminate. We're comping up this year. Do people feel like laminate is not doing as well as maybe it actually is? 
Well, you got to, first of all, laminates only 4% of the industry. Um, so it's actually a, a fairly small category that gets a lot of attention. I, I think, you know, we do, we're above average in terms of what the industry number is. That's probably because we're more of a retail business. And so if you take it, you know, as a percentage of the entire industry, but it, it's, it's doing all right. It's not growing anymore, um, but it's not getting smaller. Um, it's pretty stable, actually. You talked a good deal about warranties too at this um, at this convention. How how important are warranties to the consumer? Well, I, I think they provide a point of comparison that is quantitative that consumers understand. So that I think in a consumer's mind, if something has a 15-year warranty versus a 10, the 15 is better. Um, I still think there's. There's a lot of variables in warranties that make the warranties actually hard for consumers to understand, but they just pay attention to the number. Um, you know, we always had a competitive advantage for a number of years because our warranties were better than what was typically offered by our competitors or by our vendors, um, but everyone sort of caught up to us now. So we've had to enhance our warranties a little bit, add some attributes uh, that we didn't have before, and uh, not to be better than the industry, but to be as good as where the industry's evolved to. Right. What's happening, Charlie, um, among the various types of retailers in this business? I mean, it was, it was an era where certainly the big box players were taking share. I suspect they still are. How is that changing, and how are the independents doing in, in this whole uh, conversation? Well, I can speak for CCA, and, you know, we'd be part of that quote-unquote independent group. We're doing very well. Um, I think the home center share has slowed down a little bit only because they're not opening as many stores. And I think any mature business has some challenges in terms of growing. Certainly some of the category specialists, uh, lumber liquidators, floor and decor, um, people like that are doing well. They're public companies, so we can see their numbers. Um, but we feel like we're gaining share. Uh, now, we're probably gaining share against the specialty channel, um, but we're gaining share, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, another thing, and I'll let you go, okay. the Just Shorn, the wool right. program. This was introduced, I don't know, I mean, you talked about it, and I think it was introduced that last year at this a time? Year a, half, a year and a half ago, a half yeah. Ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm old enough to remember when people looked at wool as a really class act. If you had wool on the floor, you'd really arrive. I guess the situation is what? Younger people don't see wool not only as a floor covering, but anywhere as a, as a quality product, or, or what is it? Well, I, I mean, I, we don't have enough time to talk about all the challenges Wool's had over the years, but I think it skipped a generation for sure, to your point. But I, I think, look, we always look to differentiate ourselves. Um, we want to be doing things that other people aren't doing. Um, I think we built a story around just shorn, around sustainability, around the properties that Wool has that are different than synthetics. Um, it's, all, it's also more affordable, I think, than people think it is. And I think with the right merchandising and marketing, which I, I think we've done, um, you can be successful selling wool. It's not, let's not kid ourselves, it's not going to be, you're not going to sell as much wool as polyester or nylon or some of the synthetic fibers. But uh, the members that took it on, and we've got a significant number across all our different uh, businesses, are doing well. It's getting better each month. It's gaining momentum. We have our friends from New Zealand here. Um, this week, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot more members that uh, want to jump feet first into the category. I've always felt that in a lot of retail stores, consumers never saw high end, let alone wool. Yeah. And and I think with with your program, they are, and they're seeing it in more stores. Yeah, I mean the wool that I see when I visit stores is it's sort of one ofs. You know, there's three products here, one product there. I mean, we brought it all together into one collection. Um, I think a very unique display. Uh, system and you know told a story like we normally do so again uh, you know our expectations aren't up here for it um, they're very modest but we're actually um, uh, we're doing better than we thought we would well, I guess the green story too in many yeah. parts of the country has to be very very strong yeah, no doubt and look wool, wool prices have actually come down quite a bit in the last year and a half since we launched so it's getting even more competitive especially when you see synthetic prices going up by virtue of soft fiber and some of the uh, better quality products that we're selling so there's not as much a big a delta as you might think. What's ahead? We see um, the economy improving in dribs and drabs. Housing market is improving, although I guess interest rates are likely to go up, and that may put somewhat of a damper on it. What do you see ahead? Well, I guess what we don't see ahead is anything that could potentially take us off you know, the rails right now. I, I don't think 
you know, unless something happens that, you know, you or I don't know about or that completely catches us off guard, uh, you know, the housing recovery seems to be fairly solid. Um, you know, we're building new homes. Um, you know, home values are up, so I think, you know, people are more likely to invest in their home, and a lot of the homes that were underwater are now above water. There may, you know, there's even some refi activity going on, but, um, you know, we, again, I think we've had about six quarters now of uh, positive growth comp, and it seems to be getting better each quarter, um, but, uh, you know, I can't predict what the future's going to bring us. I mean, so we could be standing here six months from now and say, boy, we never saw that, but uh, from what we can see and what we know, um, it looks like this momentum is sustainable. Charlie, thanks for talking with us. Great, Great show. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Dave. We've been talking with Charlie Dilks. Charlie is Chief Product Officer at CCA. We're at the Carpet One Convention. This is Talk Floor TV.